going on everybody? It is Matt Sarmanza from Sarmanza Motorsports. Here with you again, checking out some more awesome products. How to do some installs. So we were just talking about this one, 38 Motorsports installations, breather box, and the AIS delete. Now we're gonna move on to some other really cool stuff. So you don't have to be super tech savvy to do this. Um, and it's not gonna interfere with anything on your machine, but it's gonna help out with maybe the, the potential cause of something coming loose or ensure basically better a better performing machine and less problematic things. What I'm talking about is engine timing plugs, okay? And everybody's gonna say, well, Matt, I already have engine timing plugs from factory, you know, the machine already has, it's not like they come with nothing there. So why do I need to change these? And I'll show you. So these are the factory ones, okay? And I'm not gonna deny that, I mean, they do the job, they don't, they're not terrible, but they're plastic. So since 2014 and up, these guys here have been plastic. Um, the problem with these, and I've seen this many times that, that so this, the, the smaller one is an eight, this is a 10. These are very easy to strip. And as you can see all these scuff marks, these things have been getting, you know, boot kicks and stuff like that. Well, the top one, I've seen this many times on the top one. So very easy to strip, number one. Number two, this top one here, and, and, this, and this does happen, where a rider might get bucked or something, you know, uh, an obstacle, they come across an obstacle and they lose their footing on the, the pegs of the nerf bars or their foot pegs and their boot now has a forward, forward motion as their foot's coming down and it ends up hitting hitting the top of this. Well, I've seen many of these come loose and, and go flying off because you can only tighten this so tight since it's plastic. Of course, because if not, you're gonna eight, end up stripping the, the hex part of it, the eight millimeter hex part of it or end up stripping the threads. I've seen both. I've seen where the threads have been broken and I've also seen more when it's stripped. And obviously when it comes flying loose in the middle of a race, wood race, however, GNCC motocross race, now all the oil starts blowing out. And that's a huge problem. So going to a metal, a metal timing plug, such as here, right? From these wonderful 38 Motorsports timing plugs, you can tighten them more. I'm not saying to go you know, put an impact gun on it, but you could definitely snug them up more. You can actually feel that it's tighter. They're not gonna back out easily. They're not gonna strip, you know, sensibly. Um, and the assurance, it's that peace of mind that things aren't just gonna come apart for no reason. You don't want anything of this, doesn't matter what motor this, you know, what motor it is, your engine, anything coming apart, right? Let's face it, we've all invested a lot of time and money in these things, okay? Well, it doesn't matter, dirt bike, four wheeler, Whatever it is, you know, it's our go-to place for fun, right? So that's one thing you would want is, you know, uh, a $10 plug to fly off and ruin your day. And worse, you know, ruin your engine, of course, because it, you know, runs out of oil. So that's a problem. So switching over to an, to an aluminum, something metallic plug ensures that to be a huge, you know, helping hand there. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to put these guys on. Super easy. We're gonna put it on on my uh, new machine. They're awesome. There's always instructions, so if you need to check it out, look on the website. It's always there, right? Or you can also email information, 38motorsports.com, right? So always the the instructions are always online. In every every product I've always gotten has always come with us. Really nice card here from from 38 Motorsports from the owner. All the instructions, so check it out. So really cool. I like that they try to keep everything really chilled, really simple. And another thing too, which makes a lot of sense is that on the engine side of it, that this plug is a 17 millimeter right, socket. Well, what's behind that is also a 17 millimeter for the flywheel. So if you need to turn the engine by hand, you have the same tool in hand once you take that off and this is a 10 millimeter. So most, most people most likely will have a 10 millimeter socket and a 17 millimeter socket instead of a 10 hex and an eight hex Allen key. So it makes life much simpler. In 09 and 13, they did have these in aluminum, but they're very shallow and they would strip so easily. I mean, it would just strip that six millimeter so easy that top one. I have taken a hammer and chisel and had to chisel them things off. I mean, so they tried to justify a little bit by going with the plastic ones and it just didn't work. So thankfully, 38 Motorsports has something way better, way better. And I mean, wonderful product, beautiful product, great quality of machining. It's very simple. 
you take your old ones out, you transfer your O-rings. If your O-rings look not so good, you should put new O-rings. My machine's brand new, so not a problem. But if not, I mean, you could pick up the O-rings for very dirt cheap. Or I mean, you could even go to a local auto parts and have them size up, you know, a metric O-ring. Okay, so we're gonna go to that. And also to the, um, another easy one, especially after the AIS delete and you have a Vortex. Very, very easy. Cause now you have all this space open here. So remember doing the, the delete, the AIS delete, cause there's the three really fat hoses that would go here that would really go right over the speed sensors. Well, we're gonna change this right here, okay? And with the Vortex, we don't need to use a speed sensor. The Vortex supports not running the speed transmission speed sensor. We don't need it. We don't need to be limiting ourselves. We need to simplify the machine for racing, just like how this is. Simplified, all we need is one connector right there for the stator, of course, and the coil pickup, and obviously one wire for the starter. That is it, and everything else, the rest of the electronics just go right there to the throttle body. That is it. That's the way I like to keep it. Smooth, simple less problems, that's for sure. And in racing, anybody that races knows the simpler it is, the better it is. Simple is great, so less problems to have. You can try to have fun, right? We're gonna go to our machine. We're gonna put these really cool products on and also the uh, parking brake block off. That's all well, this machine is for racing and well, we don't need a parking brake. So again, we're gonna be shedding some more weight and that way we don't have any debris and things like that. Debris, rocks, dust, water going into our well, our brake caliper, it's pretty expensive, you know? So if you could avoid that, comes with an O-ring in it, put that guy on there. This is a simple takeoff part. And again, you're shedding weight, so. All right, let's go ahead and let's get onto the machine and see what we can do. Okay, quick lineup on our tools here. Very simple, five tools needed. Piece of cake, one eight millimeter T-handle, one 10 millimeter T-handle. If you have socket adapters, great. Or uh, Allen keys, no problem a 10, mil, 10 millimeter socket on a quarter inch ratchet, a 17 millimeter 3H, 3H drive socket with a 3H drive ratchet, one pocket screwdriver. So quick and simple, you need the screwdriver to, to pull the O-rings off the old plugs and you will install them on the new plugs. Of course, inspect your O-rings, make sure they're not rip tearing or just straight wore out. If not, replace those. All right, really simple and take your driver, turn. If you think oil is gonna come out, just put a little shock rag under there. Sometimes oil might come out. Most time it doesn't on a cold engine. So nothing coming out. Good, we also know our oil is clean. Of course, if you tip the machine, oil will come out of there. Take our screwdriver. And gently lift this up. If there's any sand or any, any other debris sticking to that, clean that with a shop towel. And I'll take that O-ring and put it on the new timing plug. Make sure it's all the way down, right? So a little quick guide with the screwdriver. Look at that, see? Same tool to turn this, same tools to, to turn the engine. All right, this is how you check to see, well, one, to get your engine in time, and two, if you have a locked up engine as well. It's another way. Don't go around hitting that thing with a impact gun and loosening that nut because that is for the, uh, the stator. So it is a, excuse me, I shouldn't say a stator, but the flywheel. So that's a direct link to the flywheel. And of course the stator is right here on this stator cover. Okay, it doesn't have to be crazy hard. Hey, look at that. Came up right. Just snug. Take our eight and repeat the same thing. Man, that looks good. And you'll feel when it stops, when it bottoms out, you do not have to keep on cranking on it. Stop, maybe get like an eighth turn, and it's good. Again, O-ring. Mine doesn't have any grit or dirt on it, so I'm good to go. O-ring is nice and plump, right? It's round, it's not all flattened out. Flat O-ring isn't gonna seal, right? This is easy, just push it on my fingers. You actually see that the O-ring is protruding above the shoulder 
with a new tie-in plug. That O-ring is going to seal very good. That's what you want. If that thing is flat or even, it is not going to seal for nothing. Okay. Our 10 millimeter socket. Gently put it on. Okay. It just stopped. That's it. Just a little snug. Hey, look at that. I had to give it one more little snug. You know me, I'm man it was meant to be lined up and all man look at that oh man and there you have it it is just that easy so our timing plugs are installed now we can move on to our next little project be right in here so that is a five millimeter allen bolt if you have a very long, very, very long uh, Allen key that will work or Allen socket adapter, fantastic. Or you can have something about yay tall, so about an inch and a half tall, a mid-size Allen, and that you could take that off and take that plug off. We do not need that thing. Again, this is a race machine. And then also to the one behind it, because we're not running no brake light, this is also gonna come out too. We do not run this. I'm not gonna run this. I'm not trail riding it. I'm not night riding it. No headlights, no taillights. So that is more weight reduction as well. And that's things I take off all along right there. So I'm gonna be working right here in this part of the machine as far as the wiring goes. I'm gonna show you what we need to for that. All right, so now we are going to take the speed sensor off. And I, at the same time, I'm also going to take that uh, parking brake plug out as well. So you'll need some cutters for the zip tie. And I mean, I don't know who leaves the zip tie sticking out like that without cutting the end off. To me, that's just uh, it's a pet peeve. We'll just go with that. It's just one of those things. Anyways, okay. The plug. See how much easier it is when you have a different subframe? That connector is right there for the uh, parking brake. Or excuse me, not the brake light switch, which we are not running. Press down on the, the unlock and pull the plug apart. As you heard, that little nice little snap there. The uh, next one, <laughs> I don't even have to even look. I know which one it is. I know it's this one of the three, the speed sensor. Same thing, see with the screwdriver, press to open. Very good. And I guess we'll cut off our zip tie we put there for now. We'll put another one on, not a big deal. And loosen this reusable one. Okay, so get those guys loosened up. We'll make life a little easier. Work with them. I've seen people cut these off at the ends there to, uh, you know, for less wires or something like that. And it does, there's a lot less wires there. I mean, I'm not gonna cut anything on this harness. I'd rather just have Anthony build me a harness and go with that. Now this is what I normally use. This is for a quarter inch. Now you get one of three eighths size. So this guy is just shy under two inches. This is a quarter inch five. I use this guy a lot. Um, I have had to cut the ends off this thing quite a bit of times and get a warranty through my snap-on guy. And which is okay. And I do have a very, very, very long reach handle ratchet. I'm not saying you have to have this, but if you do, it does make life easier. Just to get in there. And make sure you have it in the uh, loosening position. If you had the intake off, you could reach in there with a long extension with this and break it loose, but we're gonna do it this way. So if you have something maybe a little shorter, that works. This works as well. And good old Yamaha. So of course, all their bolts having grip ends on it. Now you now that it's loose, it's easy just to grab that bolt. I know my hand's in the way, but I am literally just turning that bolt out with ease. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Bolt is in hand, right? 
So you take the sensor, give that sensor a little, a little twist towards you. Okay. And then grab. So that way you get your thumb on the end of it where the bolt holds it down. Get your thumb on the end of it and pull it up or just get a screwdriver there and pry it up. And it will come up. What we do need is we need that O-ring in there. That O-ring is actually kind of its own little unique O-ring. It's kind of flat. It's not, it doesn't protrude out very far because it's not like it's under extreme amount of pressure or anything. Again, check your O-ring for sand or debris. Make sure also if you're, if you're doing this, your motor's pretty clean. You don't want to be having a sandy motor with sand and stuff like that, you know, because it'll fall straight into the transmission. So this is good to do after washing your machine. Okay, there's that guy right there. We'll get the uh, block plate. That was actually right there by my leg. So what a size difference, right? Big sizing difference. Let me put the O-ring down from this bulky, humongous nastiness, which we, we do not need at all. Our Vortex supports that. Again, if you take this off with a stock EC, you're gonna get a check engine light for it. So this is for race applications. And there's a lot of racers out there. So this is fantastic. And wow, how nice and elegant that is. As you can see, the O-ring is protruding out very, very gently right out of it. Okay, that's a good O-ring to use. I mean, it still even has the factory grease from that O-ring. I don't think I've ever even seen that. <laughs> a little bit of gel grease there. Oh, we're gonna grab some of that. Let's see, grab, grab it on the end of my finger. Gotta put it on right there. I'll let that guy slide on there really nice. Yeah, that's a nice finishing touch. All I gotta do is just, let me see if I can use my other hand. Get my other hand in there. I'll show you. Get the light out of the way. All you gotta do is just get your finger on there and push down. And if you put it on any other way, you don't worry about lining it up right away because it will turn right around. See that piece of cake? So it'll turn around easy with my finger. Okay, I mean, you could also access it from the back here, right? No problem. So that is the nice thing about when you do the uh, AIS delete, how much room you got, it's crazy. So get our bolt. There's our bolt. Easy peasy. Again, 89 inch pounds. If you have a torque wrench or snug down and then turn about an eight sixteenth to an eighth turn tight if you're not using a torque wrench. Okay, we'll be tightening. And of course, if you have a giant long ratchet like this, you may grab it from the middle then. Don't use it from the end of the handle. Then you will end up over torquing it. And that is it, that guy is not going anywhere. What a nice difference. That is way better. That I like, I like a lot. And since we have our tool in hand, I'm gonna reach over there and get that other bolt. So here's our other bolt. So they're you know, within close proximity. You get getting the camera angle on that side. Loosen it, done, done deal. That guy is coming off. We do not need that anymore. So I don't have a park, I don't have a brake, no brake light. So reach in there, pretty easy to take out. So this does not require an immense amount of skill for this. Pretty easy DIY project. So then you get your hands in on the machine, have some fun and Clean this thing up for sure because this makes life so much better. Now, don't get me wrong, if you need your brake light, your trail riding, or maybe a camp that you could ride out from, I've been to places where you know there's you know you could do trails and camp out overnight, stuff like that. Well, then it would be good to at least have the at least to have your brake light still connected that way other riders could see you, right? And then, of course, you know, when you stop, you know, they see you know your brake light flash up. So, it totally depends on what you're doing. This machine we're going to use for motocross, there's there's no, there's nothing different about that, and we do not need a brake light on motocross. All right, so now we're on the other side. I'm going to start commencing to take off the parking brake system. The uh, parking brake block off is going to go on next.
All right, I'll show you the tools needed for that. Okay, we're gonna start right here at the top, take off the uh, parking brake lever assembly. I'm not gonna deny it, this thing has been working pretty good for me, but again, we're doing racing. If not, for loading it in the camper, it's great. If it would stay adjusted, it actually has some use for it and it doesn't get in the way either. But we're using it for racing, so four millimeter Allen, three H ratchet, and definitely push down it or maybe grab it with your, you know, your thumb and give it a squeeze. They can be pretty tight. I've seen those strip and have to drill those before. Like on an older machine, and it's not fun. So I've got them loose. Let me grab a T-handle. I've seen it with a T-handle, kind of strip the T-handle, so socket, socket adapters are a little bit better. T-handle, makes fast work of it. Now we're shedding some more weight. Bolts come out. I mean, if you, you know, the quick, really quick way if you want it to. I mean, quick, quick ways you can cut the cable if you want it to. But if you're trying to, you know, not mur you know, murder it, just give it a pull out like I just did. Okay. You would loosen these two guys right here and then pull the cable out. That way you could feed the cable through. Because if not, this is really bulky. So let me get our socket again. Same tool that we used up top. All right. Did it by hand, didn't even use an impact gun. Just holding, I'm actually using the lever to help hold it. If you have an impact gun to put it under, the snap of an impact gun would be a little bit easier, but just showing you it can be done by hand. It wasn't too, too crazy. Because if you just had the cable end, it will slide out through the uh, tunnel here by the um, steering stem a lot easier. Okay, carefully just lift that up and there you have it, piece of cake, right? Pretty simple system, I mean, it worked well, it did its job. I'm not gonna deny it, I'm, I am gonna kind of miss it, you know, I've used it for loading it up in the camper, but uh, uh, racing is racing and every little bit you could shed, well, it does make a difference. Hey, if you need some extra bolts, there's some good bolts right there and low profile. All right, so we'll put this away and now we'll go more in the center part of the frame. So our next task is we pull this guy out, make sure the exhaust is not hot, because that would be very bad. Okay, we have it pulled out. Our next tool, we have an impact gun with a eight millimeter on three eighths, or if you have a ratchet, no problem. I'm gonna use the impact gun to make it faster. And I'm actually gonna take this assembly out. For sure, when you have an RP race exhaust, a DASA, and many others. This right here, this bracket really gets in the way. So this is just for the parking brake. Again, we're deleting it, race application. So we don't need it anymore. Oh, and you'd also want me a small like pair of needle nose pliers to reach in and pull this spring out. That's right there. Now get the light out of the way because the light's shining from the other side. So let me grab some, uh, Need those pliers and show you how that's done. Not too hard whatsoever. So there you go, the impact gun. One, two. All right, two bolts, two different sizes. Got to put them back where they were. You have straight or curved needle nose pliers. That works great. And literally grab and you fish that out of that hole from that little bolt. Is that little hole right on the end? Yep. Right there at the very end, you just fish that right out of that hole. Perfect. We already loosened the other side. So now we can see we're almost we're almost there. So we'll take our cable. Watch out, don't let it whip you in the head. Or the or our, our photography camera crew going on. So now we're gonna move to the back of the machine, to the swing arm, and loosen up the rest of the bolts there, but we're already like halfway there. So our next tools that we're gonna use is a 12 millimeter socket, three inch ratchet. We're going to loosen these two bolts, not that one, do not loosen this one, that is for the brake line. 
you will leak out brake fluid and you would have to re-bleed your brake system. And also to not our cables loose, this is very easy to work with. So, piece of cake, put it on there. And start to remove. Pretty simple system. Pretty basic, but effective. Does a good job. But it has to go. We do not need that extra cabling. We do not need that bracket right there on the motor. That's just more complexity. We don't need those extra switches or anything like that. If anybody needs some new ones, I have them. Because they're coming off my machine, that's for sure. I don't need that stuff for motocross. This is a motocross machine. And that is what we're going to be using it for. Again, everybody's, you know, agenda is different. And it's okay. Whatever, whatever gets you going. Whatever does it for you. Now, do you have to remove this, these things in order to ride it? No, of course not. You can ride this machine exactly the way it is. I just know I'm going to be racing it, so I want to simplify and I don't want any of these things. And I'm also going to be doing an exhaust shootout. So I already know I have to, I need this stuff off anyways in order to be changing uh, exhaust systems. So there's another big factor right there. All right, so there is the uh, the physical, the physical actual part that actually pushes in on the uh, master cylinder. So when you engage, when you engage that cable, it actually pushes that, pushes that, that, that plunger against that pin and then, then presses the master cylinder, All right, mechanically. And that's what locks your, your rear brake. Our next tool we're going to use, you don't have to have an electric ratchet, but for me, it's a little easier. Just a little quarter inch, eight millimeter, a shallow eight millimeter. I'm going to show you some on the other side of the uh, swing arm where we're going to go. That way it makes more sense because the bolts are on the side of the swing arm. We're just going to loosen them just enough to get these cables off. Actually, yeah, we got a good shot right there. Okay, so right on that bolt. One bolt just to loosen it right just to loosen see how the cable just came off just from loosening it and then the other one up there at the front so that's why you just need to make it small it doesn't have to be really big just loosen keep it a little loosen up and that would just give you a little bit of flex to it just loosen that guy just a smidge more so you can take the bolt out if you really want to top one was holding on pretty good now you still need these brackets you know tighten down to hold the uh brake brake line right the brake hose because if the brake hose is flopping around well it's going to get ripped off by the brake rotor or chewed by the brake rotor run over by a tire or something catastrophic and i don't know i like having brakes so i'm gonna tighten these guys back up this is right here Just let the tool do the work Okay, very good. It does not have to be crazy tight. If not, it will strip. And before going to the center, I almost forgot. Just pull this little rubber plug off, slide this on out, and there we go. Now this cable is really free. Very easy. That way you're not scratching up, you know, we just got a new subframe on. They're scratching up our frame, our subframe. Our frame is, is black from factory. But, you know, you got to take care of your stuff. That way it's not getting all beat up, right? And we're cleaning stuff up and we're going to lighten up the machine. Let's go to the center now. All right, now it's a lot easier to grab this guy, pull it, because obviously we won't be scratching up our clutch cover and stuff, scratching our frame. Much easier, see, because we don't have that big bulky end there. And there we have it. There is that beast right there. And what a huge difference of cleaning that thing up. Now, while we're here, let's not forget to put our bolts back in. So you don't put these bolts in, it will start to leak oil. There's no way around that. They don't have to be super tight. 89 inch pounds. I was just barely even touching the trigger on it. It's on low. There we go. Done. No more of that, or if you're doing it by hand, you know, quarter, snug it, a sixteenth and a sixteenth or an eighth. And how 
when you go to 16 and 16 or an 8 if you feel comfortable doing that. 8 and 9 inch pounds is all you need for these case cover bolts. And which is a lot. When you're actually using a torque wrench, you can feel that's quite a bit. All right, so we're good there. So we already we already tightened up our bolts here on the swing arm already. We already tightened up our case cover bolts, these two guys right here. We've cleaned this up. I mean, usually when I take the engine out, I always actually even like to take this out. I know that's not necessary, but I mean, hey, every little bit you could take off to help save some weight, fantastic. I mean, you can get a wrench in there, but you'd be turning that guy for a long minute because that is one long bolt in there. So um, we'll just leave that there for right now. But if it does, if you have the time and the patience, you can back that bolt out, there that, that nut, and start working its, its way through, unthreading, unthreading, unthreading with like some pliers, and you can get that guy out. Take you a minute or two, but that way, hey, every little bit counts. So we're gonna go to putting our uh, our parking brake block off plate now. So here's all the parts taken off, and what's gonna replace that is this one guy here. So that is a lot of stuff when you really start to look at it, and it starts to add up to, well, a lot of weight too. So a lot of unnecessary weight for a race application. So these guys here, if anybody needs this guy right here, I'll donate it if need be, you know, for the better cause. I mean, it has its practicality and practical uses as well. Um, but for what I'm going to be using this machine for, uh, I don't, I personally don't need it. So we'll take a nice new razor knife. Quick and easy. Now let's see the goods. I love it. you always get a sticker with every everything so dirty motorsports is on top of their game so fresh stainless steel bolts a new little o-ring to go on there right to keep the water and all the the junk out of there you don't want any contaminants going in that is the whole idea of this because there was a gasket on the, the oem one and i really love how the uh bolts are recessed that is a fine quality part right there Without dropping them all. So they're recessed well. Okay, yes, let me hold the O-ring with two fingers. Fantastic. And all we need is a one six millimeter Allen. Okay, piece of cake. And we're going to slide that guy. In fact, I would recommend just taking the bolt out. Just putting it on nice and flush. See how I just went on there, put it on quick and easy. I'm literally holding it like a clamp with my hand. So I'll show that again. So really slow, All right? You want, that way the O-ring doesn't fall out. Okay, put it on there nice and easy. I'm just used to doing it pretty quick. So it's my fault. And feel that it's nice and even. I can even feel that the O-ring is a nice stick to it already. It doesn't want to move easily to reposition which is good so our parts are are holding very good very strong and that's what we want because this guy is going to be on there well for the life of this machine or not unless somebody else changes it, i'm not changing it that's for sure got our ratchet on there piece of cake and now you have a better clear understanding now of the brake caliper here in the back. So it simplified that, our bleeder and our line in. So we did not open our line, our brake hose, our brake line, because well, we'd lose, uh, we'd contaminate our system by getting air in there and brake fluid and moisture do not mix, right? There's moisture in the air, especially here in Florida, but there's always moisture in every, every air. So if you do not believe that, well, you can contaminate your system. And that would cause boiling under high braking. So, good thing to know. I mean, what a beauty right there. What, what a work of art. The uh, craftsmanship here, the machining craftsmanship is on point. So they got this thing down. So it's seated down. Does not have to be crazy tight, snug. And just give a little, just a little push. Nothing crazy. Perfect. Not going anywhere. Love how it is flush mount. Love. It is simple. 
Nothing's gonna get in the way. Nothing's gonna get caught up in that. It's not impeding the the advancement of not putting a socket to take the brake caliper out. Because I know me, I am good. This is how you take the brake caliper out. You take out these two 14s. So it's not impeding the progress of using a socket now on there, a deep wall socket, or even a semi-deep socket to take that brake caliper out to replace the brake pads. I like it. Quick, simple, elegant, smart. Simplicity is a beautiful thing. So there you have it. We'll get some pictures of, we'll put up some pictures of all three things that are put on. Really all five are uh, AIS Delete, our breather, timing plugs, also two our parking brake, and uh, our speed sensor block off. And also two, we're gonna put on the uh, oversized brake pedal. And that is a nice thing, so. That is a nice touch. So that nice, beautiful billet aluminum oversized brake pedal. So the Yamaha has a pretty good brake pedal. Um, other other machines really do need it. So you gotta look for it. It's like, it's a very small pedal. It's like, is this for like a kid's bike or like a dirt bike? It's like we're on an ATV, we kinda need a larger one, especially in racing. Um, Cause when you need the brakes, you do not need to be looking for it. You need to know it's there. So that is the next thing we're gonna be putting on. That is a beautiful part right there. And I believe that is going to be a wonderful thing on this machine that with this SE black edition, you know, blacked out frame is gonna look great. So now we're ready to put our gas tank back on, put our fenders back on. And we did take the fenders off just so that way it's easier to see, but you could do all this with all the plastics on, but the Yamaha is very easy to take all that off. So might as well makes it working, working with it a lot easier, not getting, you know, working around the fenders and then we have a good, clear visuals of what we're doing, all right? So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope this helps out a lot. This is a quick, you know, some quick DIY projects. And also, if you plan these things out ahead, you know, like doing the AIS delete with the, the uh, uh, breather, then it's a lot easier to do these other things. Because if you try doing like the speed sensor block off with all the hoses, it's really hard. It's a lot tougher. But when you're also up here doing the uh, AIS delete, it's very easy then also to take that parking brake cable off. They work good while it's brand new. Unfortunately, with sand and other things getting in the brake pads, you always have to be adjusting it. So unfortunately, it doesn't last very long anyway. So there's that. And again, for racing, well, we just don't need it anyways, to be honest. So good to get rid of that. I haven't seen, I have not had one of these in ages. Um, also too, I was asked, what do I put in here? I was asked that you could put the factory bolts back in here if you'd like or you know it's lighter than bolts silicone so you could put some silicone in there that way to keep water from getting in but nothing's gonna happen because it's not it's actually not physically um, going into the clutch perch so if you replace your clutch perch later to a different one maybe something that has like a, a bearing system in it or just something totally different I usually use a different clutch clutch perch um, but I'll use this one for a good while no problem, but silicone works good. Like black or clear silicone or silver silicone, gray silicone, or maybe some titanium bolts. I mean, hey, we're looking for as light as possible, right? So silicone is lighter than a bolt. So a little dab of silicone, that way to keep contaminants and stuff like that from getting in there, or just let it be like that. So for me, that's fine. And then also, I'm gonna show hand guards. That's what we're gonna be doing here soon. Hand guards and handlebars. So why haven't I put my hand guards on? Well, we should have to do handlebars as well at the same time too. That is another huge thing. What handlebars do you run on ATV? There's about a million different handlebar combinations. What works the best? Stay tuned, you're about to find out. Please like and subscribe.